Hey guys, James again with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I'm very excited and a little bit scared to bring you a review of the new Smith & Wesson Model 69 and 44 Magnum with a 2.75 inch barrel. Now, while the Model 69 has been out for a while, this is the first version that has the 2.75 inch barrel and it was just released in May of 2017. Well, let's talk about the what and the why of the Model 69 Combat snub nose. What is it? It is an L-frame gun that's between the end frame, which is like the larger Smith & Wesson 629, the full frame 44 Magnums, and the K-frame, which is traditionally a 357 or 38 frame. You're basically looking at a slightly beefed up K-frame or 357 Magnum frame with the 44 Magnum cylinder. In fact, a lot of the L-frame guns are 357 Magnums and they typically come in a seven round cylinder. Now this one is a five round cylinder. So you've got five chambers in this cylinder. It takes 44 Special or 44 Magnum. So why did Smith make this gun? Well, they said they wanted to make a 44 Magnum that was available for personal protection. And really, they aren't kidding. So to compare this to the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan that I reviewed a few months back and absolutely loved, you can see some superficial similarities, right? 44 Magnum, short barrel. The Ruger is more geared towards backpackers and protection against large predators, where the Smith & Wesson's meant to be a little more versatile, where certainly you could backpack this gun and use it against large predators. It seems like this gun is geared more towards the two-legged predator. Smith said they came out with the 69 Combat for people who wanted to carry a 44 Magnum for personal protection. Turning back to the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan, the Super Red Hawk Alaskan, I think, is about 45 ounces, and it's more like an N frame or an X frame for Smith & Wesson. It's a large, beefy frame, and it is not a light gun. Now, this one isn't either, but you're looking at 34 ounces for the Smith & Wesson 69 Combat Magnum, and bear in mind, the average steel frame 1911 is about 40 ounces. So this is a relatively light gun for being a full bore 44 Magnum. Now, in exchange, you're losing a round over the Super Red Hawk Alaskan, which is a six rounder. This is a five rounder, and you're gonna gain a lot in the way of recoil, which is why I said I'm a little scared to be shooting this thing today. It's going to kick like a mule. I don't doubt it, and the worst part is, I don't have any 44 Special, only Magnum. So I'm probably gonna save this for last because something tells me I'm gonna be a little bit jumpy when I'm shooting this later. The 69 Combat has an MSRP of 849 and I've seen it street price for around $679 so that's pretty good and that makes it one or two hundred dollars cheaper than the Super Red Hawk Alaskan but let's see how it compares on the range. Right guys first shots with the Smith & Wesson Model 69 Combat again this is a gun that weighs less than a 1911 but it shoots full bore 44 Magnum I don't have any 44 Special today so I'm definitely gloving up and this is going to be a wild ride. I thought the Red Hawk was pretty brutal. This something tells me is going to be worse so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh. 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 Oh. oh thank god I wasn't loaded. Oh, oh thank god. All right, let me load this thing up for real. We're gonna kick this off with Remington UMC 44 Remington Magnum, 180 grain. Let's do this. Ugh. God, I'm telling you, man, you can feel it. I mean, you can feel it in your sinuses when you shoot this thing, I, I'm not exaggerating. Like, it's that weird feeling, um, almost like when water almost gets in your nose in the pool. I mean, you definitely feel it. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse, recoil-wise, but then again, I'm also wearing gloves, so maybe I'll take the gloves off. I'm gonna shoot at that top right target. Um, I've already shot about half a box through this thing, and I'm already starting to feel a little jittery. I am pushing hard. This thing's making me flinch. All right, here we go. All 
Ooh, all right, top left target, top left target. All right, guys, I'm throwing them a little low and to the left because I'm dipping. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this sucks. This sucks balls. But this gun isn't made to be comfortable or to make you feel comfortable. Actually, I take that back. In a way, it kind of is made to be comfortable because it's made to be comfortable to carry. This is a relatively lightweight 44 Magnum. I think this is about as light as a 44 Magnum should be and about as small as a 44 Magnum should be. So I could actually picture carrying this thing, backpacking with this thing. It is 10 ounces lighter, maybe more than the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan. You lose around a capacity, but this gun is a lot smaller and a lot lighter. It also kicks your ass a lot harder. The Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan has that massive overmolded grip that really helps sap up the recoil. And the Smith kind of has this dinky little regular old Smith & Wesson rubber grip that's comfortable, but nothing to write home about in terms of recoil mitigation. So less than impressed with the grip on it. Let's go through and let me rate this gun as a carry gun. Uh, in case you haven't seen, uh, I've introduced a new rating system. I've got seven categories for concealed carry guns, and I rate them one to seven, and then multiply that by two. Plus, I add my own tilt point if I want to. One, sights. So the sights, pretty good. They're adjustable. You've got a nice, tight rear notch, uh, adjustable for windage and elevation. It's also drilled and tapped for scope, if you or an optic, if you want. And it's got a nice, obvious front blade that has a good orange contrast insert in it. So they're pretty good. Uh, I would say six out of seven. They're great, but they're not perfect. Number two, let's talk about fit and finish. Fit and finish on this gun, I mean almost flawless. This is almost as good as it gets. But like I said, the bead blasted stainless is actually showing a little wear in terms of rust. All right, guys, I love this gun so far. But here's why the Smith & Wesson is only going to get a five and a half for fit and finish. Fit, finish on this gun is near impeccable. But as you guys might be able to see, it's already starting to get little pox of rust. Got some right there, right by my fingernail. Can you see that right there in the cylinder flute? Got a little more right there. So it isn't like this thing's rampantly rusting, but if you're in the South, especially if you're gonna carry this thing, backpack it, put it on your boat, I wouldn't say that this thing is very rust resistant. I love the bead blasted stainless finish. I think it's one of the best looking finishes in the industry today. I love the way that these Smiths look right out of the box. The fitment is perfect. I mean, this gun, it locks up like a bank vault craftsmanship like a Swiss watch, but especially us Southerners or people are, if you're going to be carrying it and sweating on it, you need to keep a nice coat of CLP on this thing if you want to keep it rust free. And that's unfortunate. The trigger, you know, I can't believe it's not butter. This is, I can't believe it's not double action. It's almost as good as the high-end Dan Wesson revolvers. It's just a nice, smooth, uniform pull from front to back, and the shot surprises you when it goes off, and that's great. Single action, also smooth, a little bit on the heavy side, but still very smooth. So trigger, I'm going to say six out of seven. Value, I think Smith & Wesson does pretty well. Now, I've seen this street price for around $680. You're saving like 100 bucks off of the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan and getting similar capabilities. And Smiths are not inexpensive guns because they're not poorly made. And the revolvers always seem to go up in value or at least maintain their value. And on the other hand, this only would be a couple hundred dollars more than the Taurus, which is generally regarded as being lower in terms of craftsmanship. So I'm going to give the Smith a six in terms of value concealed carry economy. So yeah, this gun's a little bit on the heavy side, but remember you're dealing with a 44 Magnum. Uh, really, it's not the best option in terms of carry, but I think this is, they got just the right size, shape, dimensions, weight, everything for a concealed carry 44 Magnum. They wanted to make this an easy to carry 44, and they did it. So I've got to give them, 
a six out of seven. The only reason I can't give them seven is just because it's kind of dumb to carry 44 Magnum unless you need it for bear or something like that. Uh, otherwise, this would, would get a seven. Now, mechanics. Um, mechanics are good. I mean, the cylinder, it comes open whenever you want it to. Everybody's familiar with the Smith, the shelf for the cylinder release. Uh, button goes forward. Uh, you can easily remove the cylinder. Now, I will say, and I'm not the only one to say this, the ejector rod is a little meek. See, that's a little flimsy. Got kind of a slim ejector rod, but you know, it works. It works perfectly. It kicks them out whenever it needs to. Uh, the hammer, the hammer spur, as usual, it's got that very aggressive checkering from Smith & Wesson. The grip is great. The gun's easy to manipulate. If you know how to use a revolver, this is not gonna give you any trouble. So I'm gonna say for mechanics, this gets a six and a half out of seven. Performance. Now, performance, I've gotta dock it a little bit. Yes, they made this gun. I'm gonna give it the points back in terms of efficiency, carrying efficiency, but I've gotta dock at least a half point, a point and a half for performance just because this thing, I mean, you know, I can barely hit the broad side of a barn here at, uh, at 10 yards. And that's just because this gun is way too damn light. The trigger's great, the sights are good. I mean, even the most experienced shooter's probably gonna flinch because this big dog likes to bark. Ow, ow. So I'm gonna have to say five and a half for performance, and it sucks because I really like this gun and I wanna rate it higher, but I, I've gotta be honest. In any event, I'll add up the score, tabulate it, let you know what it is, but all in all, guys, I think this is a great gun. I've really enjoyed shooting this. Smith & Wesson did what they said they were going to do with this gun, and that is make a 44 Magnum that's easy to carry, easy to conceal, and whenever you need it, you've got full house 44 Magnum, five rounds of it at your disposal. So I wanna say good job to Smith & Wesson for doing what they set out to do. In any event, I wanna say thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and ProxyBid. Thank you to Smith for sending me this revolver to check out. It just came out in May. And then I wanna say thank you to our Patreon supporters, subscribers, you guys that watch every week, commenters, all of you, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week.